Hello, welcome to Strength in Education, an educational talk show. I am your host, Dr. Karen Dukes. Today, we have a very special show. In celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., today is his holiday. Yes, every third Monday in January is King's Day. Dr. King would have been 94 years old today. So listen, I've invited some friends to help me talk about Dr. Martin Luther King and some of his memorable moments. One of my first special guests would be Mrs. Jackson. Hello, there you go. Hi, Mrs. Jackson. Hi, how are you? It's such a pleasure to be here today, Dr. Deuce. Thank you, thank you. We're so glad to have you. I had to invite you because I wanted you and some other friends to join in with helping me talk about Dr. Martin Luther King. So where do we go from there? So as I was thinking, where do we start? There's so much to say. So my mind went back because number one, I'm a teacher and the teacher in me thought, where was I? when we got the news that we lost Dr. Martin Luther King. Well, I had to say I was in school. I was in school, a student. I was in fifth grade, okay? I was in fifth grade, and I remember when they, we received the information, the teachers were scrambling around, sharing the information, and talking and crying, and um, I just recall putting my head down, and I still remember putting my head down and crying. Right. Do you remember where you were? So, Dr. Dukes, I, I really don't believe I was actually born um, yet <laughs> when Dr. King passed away. I um, know. You know, however, uh, through school and, um, you know, from the talks that I've had with my parents. That's right. Um, I've learned so much about Dr. Martin Luther King and his contributions to um, our world today. That's right. And thank you because, listen, generations, if you heard what I said, Dr. King would have been 94 years old. So we go way back. So let me tell you a little bit about me. So I was in school and I recall even going home and the world was so sad on the news, parents crying. Um, there were riots. It was just a lot going on. And um, I just felt so bad and we were sad for a long time but moving forward as I went on and as I studied more about Dr. Martin Luther King and appreciated all his contributions everything that happened in his life guess what my focus went to his father my focus somehow went to his father because I was thinking you know you're losing a child or just life and, and just as a family person. So as I continued my research, I picked up on this. Dr. Martin Luther King's father, and I think a lot of people call him Daddy King. He was King mm -hmm. Senior. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he too was a Baptist minister, Baptist pastor like his son. So you know, generational, you exactly. know how it kind of went together yes. like that. <laughs> Yeah, so, absolutely. yes, so as I was reading that, I read something that Dr. King's father actually went to Germany for a, like, let's say a minister conference for a workshop, for an event. Mm -hmm. You know how ministers, how pastors travel. That's right. Mm -hmm. So they went to Germany. He, wow. he was in Germany, and while he was there, he stumbled upon statue. He stumbled upon some real history right. in Germany. And so he fell in love with one of the Protestant the leaders. Let's say that, okay? Mm -hmm. He fell in love with this leader, and he discovered that this man was so great. He was wonderful. And Dr. King's father just just worshiped him. He just loved all of that. So I was not there, guys. But guess what? The person that he loved so much, we're talking, this man was back in the 14, 1500. So you're talking about you weren't born. So <laughs> exactly. we weren't here. Right. Okay? So moving forward, Dr. King's father went home. He went home, talked to his family, pondered over this great leader, and felt so good about that man. He decided to change his name. Wow. Wow. I don't know if people know that. So Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who we know, was really born Michael. 
Yes, yes, that's amazing. I mean, it's just amazing how parents can see something in their kids from the beginning, you know. Thank you, so. thank you. And so that's what I felt. And being that we're doing this show, Strength in Education, and I have another motto, parents are the first teachers. So then when I was thinking, I said, so wait a minute, his father lived almost 30 years as Michael. And then you go to Germany, you come back, you talk to your family, and I sure wish I could have been a fly on that wall. Exactly. And Absolutely. so, and I want everyone to know, I have a thing about names and how parents name their children. And um, I'm not saying I always laugh about it, but I just be wondering, oh, how did you, oh, where did you get your name from? Right, right. How did mom and daddy come up with your name? Oh, oh, that's how they spell it? So I have fun with it. It's right. nothing <laughs> rude or anything. I have fun with it. And so thinking about Daddy King, so let's, so let's move the story on. So he changed his name. So he had to turn around and change his son's name. Right. Our, who we know is Dr. Martin Luther King, he was his oldest son, his first son, but right. second child. And so he changed his name, he changed his son's name. And so the leader was Martin Luther. That was the famous um, leader in Germany. So because he idled him, he worshiped him, he really admired that man for being so great for the foundations that he laid there in Germany. So they did the name change. So yes, Michael King Jr became Martin Luther King Jr. Amazing, that's just an amazing story. And out of all the things I know we could talk about, but I said, you know what? I'm talking to another mama, we're parents, just to think the mindset. Mm -hmm. And so I thought it was so important that we bring that out. We talk about that, and um, I just wanted people to know what they didn't know. And you know what? We cannot talk all day about this, but please, just enjoy Martin Luther King movies, videos, stories. There's so much out on Dr. Martin Luther King. Just enjoy everything. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King is a little special to me also because, um, okay, I, t I, I was 10 years old in the fifth grade, I said, when we lost him. And then as I moved on through life, I had dreams, I had desires, and so, I wanted to also talk about, as Dr. King has so many things he talked about, one of his famous speeches was, I have a dream. I have a dream, absolutely. I have a dream. Yes. So we love that speech. We love his speech. And so I said, well, Dr. Dukes, you have some dreams. What were your dreams growing up? And so that's what I thought we would talk about is what is our dream? So here is one of my dreams. One of my dreams I wanted to be, well, I always wanted to be a teacher. And if you have not picked up the teacher in me written by, the, the teacher in me written by me, um, in my story, it, it talks about how I just had a dream of becoming a teacher. And so when I think back over my life and I think back over Dr. King's life, his father saw greatness in Martin Luther. Right. So that's why he did the name change. And I said, you know what? I want parents to see greatness in their children. I want you to feel that. I want you to see what changes, what differences can you make? Absolutely. Because power is in a name. It is. <laughs> power is I, in a name. I totally agree. It is. Yes. So I really appreciated that story. And so moving forward, as we were talking about Dr. Martin Luther King, um, I have a dream, and we all know that I have a dream speech. And so you have to pull that, guys, and look at that yourselves. But then I said, okay, so my dream, and even now in life, I have other things that I want to do, other things I want to be a, com a part of. And I really want to have a great time in focusing on this educational talk show and being the best teacher that I can be, being a motivational speaker. And um, so that's where I'm at. And working with parents is another big thing in my life where I really feel strengthening parents Absolutely. will strengthen their families. And look what Dr. King's father did. He found strength in that name, right. so right. he changed it to find some strength, Absolutely. okay? So thinking about all of that, Mrs. Jackson, do you have any dreams and desires? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes, yeah, so entrepreneurship is definitely the ultimate goal, um, whether it be through songwriting mm -hmm. um, or an yes. author 
or creating an institution for the betterment of others, um, that's definitely something that I want to do. I want to be a lot like Dr. Martin Luther King and live that's on right, those same that's principles right. um, that he lived on, you know. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't think about the importance of using your gift, not just for yourself, but to make a better world, you know, and just to make life a little bit easier for the next man, because we all know that life is already tough. So that's right. Um, just in whatever I do, I want to be able to give the best of me like Dr. King did um, wow. so that I can help others or be an inspiration to others as well. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I know you are a wife, a mother, and a teacher, so that is very important. I needed to hear your perspective, and I appreciate you for sharing that. So, as I said, there's a lot going on, and I just respect parents, and I respect the things that they're doing with their families, and I always want to think and say to parents, watch your circle, watch your network, because you really, your children are watching you, are. the kids are they looking, are. but yes, we do want the best for our children, and so um, I love that, and I'm trying to see what else, what else did I have focused for me um, being an educator and being so concerned about life and, and moving forward with parenting skills. And so, like you, I just see myself moving forward in those aspects. And I really think this opportunity, I think um, Strength in Education to help us get this educational talk show on the road. Absolutely. Get it out there beyond YouTube because we really want to bring stories together to help parents because that's some things that I was talking about with a parent the other day that, you know, um, we have to be a part of inspirational readings. Right. Um, courageous conversations. Work team up with other parents. Mm -hmm. Some parents may feel that maybe they're not doing enough or they don't have it all, but watch your circle. Yes, watch your circle. Get involved. Right. I love seeing parents that get their children involved in extracurricular activities. Um, um, get your children, your family involved in educational field trips. And a lot of people want to, um, well, let's say parents, a lot of parents want to I don't want to say blame it all on the school right. or they expect the teachers to do it all but then guess what parents are the first teachers, first teachers you're the first teacher so do your very best those first four or five years that you have your children before you release them or you send them out there to the schools. look what dr king's father did and i said to myself wow his father was almost 30 years old, living under one name, and then you take a child, I'm just trying to imagine a five-year-old all of a sudden, mm -hmm. the name changed. Right. But it was because of greatness. Greatness, yes, he saw something that others uh, may not have seen at that time, you know. And doc, uh, Dr. Dukes is also, look, speaking it into existence, manifestation, you know. There you um, go. He definitely, you know, spoke that into Dr. King's life. And yeah, so, um, yeah. Because when we think back over all the work Dr. King did before he passed, which he was under 40 years old. I'm thinking about people I know under 40. Right. Talking like him, reading like him, writing like him, speaking like him. I'm like, this man was so amazing. Yes. And he still would have been amazing as a Michael, but I'm like, <laughs> when I think about his name and I'm like, woo, just right. his name sounds just so it powerful. It so does. powerful. But I'd like to thank you, Miss Jackson. Thank you so much for helping me. I said, let me get my friends together and I have some more friends that are coming in to help me with this conversation. But let's remember that today's topic we're talking about is what is your dream? Inspired by who? The famous Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So at this time, we are going to take a break and we'll be right back. Thank you. Hello, welcome back, welcome back. So yes, Dr. Dukes, I'm still here. We're still on our topic. What is your dream? I have another friend here that's going to help us with this conversation. At this time, let's welcome Haley. Come on, Haley, how are you? I'm great, I'm great. Thank you so much for coming today. I know it's Dr. King's holiday. A lot of praise things are going on in the world today. And you've heard about Dr. King in school and at home, and I know you love that. And have you heard of his speech, I Have a Dream speech? Um, 
I think around maybe in the seventh grade, they um, would have us in class and they'd kind of go over it a little bit. Um, they'd go and kind of just talk about how he, you know, had so many dreams and tried to really just change the world with what he did. And even though it wasn't very um, quick, it did happen over time. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for sharing that, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming to share that. So listen, let's talk a little bit about you, and then I want to hear, do you have any dreams, okay? Mm -hmm. So tell me how, you want to tell me your age and your grade, and tell me what's going on at school. Um, I am in the ninth grade. Um, oh. Okay. Well, that means first year in high school. Mm -hmm. All right, so listen, I know there are a lot of things going on, so what's happening in school? Are you loving all your classes? Yeah, I think I'm doing pretty good this year. I plan on trying to um, go for the honor roll, so, so far I have all A's and one B. So, um, everything's been pretty good. Um, I've been trying to turn things in this um, semester, and you know, just hopefully be better than I was um, last semester. Right. I wasn't the best, but I'm, I'm definitely doing better. All right, I love honesty and it's okay because guess what? You can be your best critic. You can just know you can do better. You want to do better. You, you're looking at, you, you may have people that you admire and you, you have to have a dream. So this is what we're going to talk about because I wanted to know, are you involved in any extracurricular activities and moving forward, have you thought about your dreams? Well, this semester, or this year, I wanted to go for the volleyball team, but sadly they had already started the, um, the team a little bit earlier before okay. school started. So since I couldn't do that, I thought about some more things that I wanted to do, and I've always really been into piano. I wasn't the best at it at first, but at my grandparents' house, they kind of um, had a piano, and I'd go in there and kind of just, you know, practice with it. And luckily, this year, I was able to um, enroll in a, um, a class for it, and I've been doing well, I'm getting better, and I'm, I'm pretty glad that I'm able to get there. Awesome. I've also, um, my dreams that I've been thinking about, I've yes. always definitely wanted to um, be a veterinarian. And over time I thought about it and I was like, well, you know, once I get better at this and kind of, you know, um, get more into it, I definitely want to open up my own. Wow. To, um, you know, not only just help myself, but the community, hire people that maybe aren't the best at getting jobs, but you know, definitely somebody that's committed to wanting to do it, so I've definitely been thinking about that. Wow, well I love you for that. Let me just tell you, I'm afraid of animals in a sense, <laughs> overall. Really afraid of dogs and cats, but love horses, isn't that strange? But um, thank you so much for, you, you, you're on the ball to be in the ninth grade, young lady. I must tell you that, and I really appreciate you for sharing that information. I do know some veterinarians. And so listen, you know, stay focused in school, keep moving on, and I can see you because you know, after high school, then you're moving to college and moving into your medical program. And where did you get that from? Do you know where did the veterinarian, the love for animals come from? Yeah, um, as a kid, I'd always have an animal with me. Um, I was always really into dogs, and I've kind of found that I've liked um, other animals as well. My parents find it a little um, freakish because I kind of want different animals, exotic animals, different pl just, you know, a variety of different things. Wow. And, um, I know I've always had a dog. I've always been into bigger dogs. I love smaller dogs as well, but I've always been into bigger dogs. Um, but right now I have a pit bull, Ariel. So um, I've just, you know, always had a very big passion to be around. Wow. Animals, so. so thank you. I want you to keep that passion. I want you to keep that passion and keep reading about people that are doing great things. My story, the teacher and me, um, it was, I just wrote it because I always wanted to be a teacher. And I'm talking about from birth. My mother said, that's the only thing I talked about. And so I followed my dream, I followed my passion, and then I did, and, and in the story, it talks about how this little girl pretended to be a teacher just for years, 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 and then she became a teacher. Mm -hmm. So I want you to, to feel that in your heart, make that your passion, make that your love, keep working towards that. I'm so proud of you. I wanna stay in touch with you. Definitely. Because, um, I don't know if I'll be able to do any work there, but I'll be able to refer people to you <laughs> to go work at the veterinarian. But I do wish you well. Again, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your dream thank because you that's what we wanted to be about today. I just wanted to hear from people and just stay focused. 
And this show is called Strength in Education. So I want people to find that strength mm -hmm. in education. Just enjoy life and living and make us proud, make your parents proud. And again, I'd like to thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Hello, welcome back, welcome back. Strength in Education, we are back. And I told you, I have a day of special friends. I have another friend with me, and we're still talking about Dr. Martin Luther King and celebrating his holiday. Yes, his holiday, uh, every third Monday in January. So our theme today is, what is your dream? You know, Dr. King was really big on, I have a dream. So I thought I'll get some friends together and we'll talk more on, what is our dream? So our special, another special guest we have is Haven. All right, so we have Haven and she's going to help me in the celebration of Dr. Martin Luther King's holiday. How are you, sweetie? I'm great. I'm great. You are so pretty. Thank you. I love your top. So listen, how old are you? Um, I'm nine years old. Nine years old. So what is that? In about third grade? Mm -hmm. All right. So listen, if you're in the third grade, so by now you should have heard a little bit about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., have you? Yes, ma'am. Great. So what have you heard about him? So I know that he was a protester kind of, he stood for black and white people, yeah. like they're going to the same school, um, so they could be like people. That's right, that's right, thank you so much. Um, in some schools, kids have to do projects on different famous black people, maybe women, men, and I don't know, January, maybe in the month of February. Have you gotten to that part yet, having to do a project? Uh, on yeah, anyone yeah. yet? Okay, well, when you get to that point, you may decide to do a project on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. because honey, there's a lot of information. He would have been 94 years old now. And he did a lot of great things in the world. We're so proud, we're so happy. And he had a famous speech called, I have a dream. And I thought we'll talk about our dreams. What, do you have a dream? I have a dream. And I'm the author of this book. So this was one of my dreams. And I want to become a teacher. So that was another one of my dreams. Have you started thinking about any of, do you, do you have a dream? Or have you started thinking, hmm, what do I want to be when I grow up? Um, I already have a dream, actually. Okay. I have a dream of investing a building with gymnastics and basketball dancing stuff that I really enjoy. Like, I, really, I really enjoy um, gymnastics. Okay. I've been doing that for a while. I've been awesome. doing that for a lot, for a really long time. Okay. And I actually just started basketball and I'm getting pretty good at it. And I actually had like a little thing yesterday. It was it was supposed to be a game, but it got canceled. So it's okay. just kind of like a practice one. Awesome, awesome. Wow, so you are a busy beast. Mm -hmm. my, I, my dad actually makes me read investing books and stuff like that, and I've learned a lot from that. So wait a minute, did you say investment books? Wow, I'm trying to think, do I know? I have some grandchildren. I don't know if they approach me yet. And my grandchildren are like 11, 12, and 13 years old. I don't know if we talked about investing, investment books. I am so proud of your father. That's another part of my show where I look for fathers, parents that are really doing something extra with their children. This is perfect. So even with your father exposing you to that, you have an interest? Before he 
help others. That's right, that's right. So you, you, honey, we're going to have to work together. I want to be on your team. I can see it now. Nonprofit organization, business in your name, LLC and INC. I want to be on your board because I can see you're going places. You're really on the ball with that. Tell your dad, I love him. I appreciate him for saying all of that and instilling some greatness. Dr. Martin Luther King's father did the same thing. And I know there are a lot of fathers and parents that are doing the same thing. But that was my point of having this show. I really want to talk to children, families, and find out what's going on because some parents are on the ball and they see greatness in their children and they're moving forward. Some parents need some help or they want to be a part of a network, a circle of people that are doing great things and big things. You're on the right trail. I really appreciate you for saying that and girl, you just keep it up. You keep up the good work. I'm going to be looking, I'm going to be following you because I want you just to continue making me proud but making your parents, your family proud of you. So you stay focused, keep reading your investment books and any other books that are really have an interest to help build your character because that's what this is all about, okay? And I thank you so much. Did you share, did you get it all out about your dream? Is there anything else, ma'am? Since I can't, I'm not old enough to start a business, an actual big business. Uh, I've actually been thinking about like just selling things. Well, guess what? You can start that mm -hmm. at your age. Yeah, I just like like get a stand, go to local like, parks or something. Wow. Stuff like that, selling stuff. So, have you started making bracelets or uh, jewelry? I used to, and I used to go to in Texas. I used to go to school there and I used to sell them. So I was my sister and uh, yeah, we used to just sell those things. Okay. Well, listen, listen at this, business partner. After this, I would love to work with you on one of your business ideas and, and hey, maybe sitting at the conference table with your parents because at any age you can start a business. So I would love to help you with that. And um, I heard you say, get a stand. You, I mean, I'm a vendor at a lot of different places with my books, but I can see you out there. So let's talk a little bit more about that at a later time. Thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome, no problem. Yes, yes. So you heard it. I had another friend here that wanted to help us with learning more about what's going on in the world and sharing our dreams. Because what is our topic today? What is our dream? So I'd like to thank you so much for coming on and sharing, but we're going to stay in touch, okay? We really appreciate you. And um, you really helped me with this segment and I really, really needed to hear from someone your age. So, Stay focused, keep enjoying school, keep enjoying all your extracurricular activities, okay? Okay, thanks again. Thanks again, and right on. What a day.